begin by prepping the spool holder as before with the other HDP panels it's basically um, an M4 by 12 millimeter bolt with an M4 spring washer and uh, a T-nut um, and we'll place this into the extrusion here underneath the, um, the feeder and we'll just lock it into place like so and tighten down these bolts with an allen key. Next take the PTFE tubing and push one side into the coupler on the feeder. Next push the other end in through the extruder making sure that it is pushed in all the way. Pushing it in only halfway through or just through to this coupler um, will cause the extruder to clog uh, when printing. Next take some 1.75mm 3D printer filament and to make it easier for it to go in through the feeder we'll just straighten out the first few inches like so and then push in through the feeder apply pressure between the feeder and the feeder arm and push in until it's locked in place between the idler and the gear and then we should just be able to turn the large gear by hand to feed the filament up through the coupler. Once you see it appear in the, um, in the PTFE tubing we can just push the arm down and feed it in all the way until it reaches the bottom of the extruder like so. Finally we'll take the tub of silicone PTFE grease and just by applying some onto your finger we'll rub this onto the lead screw like so and we want to get a pretty even spread all along the lead screw and we want to pass the z-axis down through the lead screw as well to get it to spread nice and evenly. This next step is optional, but um, if you have some WD-40 or some lithium grease, um, we can use this on the X and Y rods. Uh, over time, the bushings are oil sintered, so over, over time they will uh, self-lubricate these rods. But um, just to get it going, um, some WD-40 uh, is a is a good way to um, go about it. So um, we'll just take a rag like this and. Um, Spray some grease on it like so, and then just rub it into the rods. Doing this, you also want to be careful to make sure not to get any of the grease on the print surface, as that could compromise the first layer's ability to stick effectively onto the bed. Next, head over to the Arduino website and download the Arduino IDE software and install it onto your computer. Next head over to the Repeteer website and again download the Repeteer host software and install it onto your computer. Finally head to the GitHub page and download all of the files on, uh, on the ProForge and save them to your computer. The links for all of these will be in the description box. Once the files from the GitHub have finished downloading, navigate to the ProForge single firmware folder and in the Marlin folder open up marlin.ino. Next connect the printer to your PC or Mac via USB. And in the Arduino IDE, head to Tools, Board and select Arduino Mega 2560 and select the port number to what you have connected. Finally hit Upload to send the firmware to the Arduino. Uploading should only take around 30 seconds or so. Make sure that everything on the ramps board is connected properly, especially the end stops and motor cables. You also want to make sure that the set screws on the green power connector and these blue terminals here are clamped down firmly onto the cables 
and that the cables are also pushed in all the way to ensure the best contact. Next insert the power cable and flip the switch to power on your ProForge. When in operation ensure that the 40mm fan is always on and that the electronics cover is always placed over the electronics. Once powered up you should be greeted with a screen like this. Check that the extruder and heated bed are both displaying around room temperature. Next manually move the print head to the centre of the bed and raise the print platform to meet it. The Z-probe needs to be adjusted so that it is above the nozzle but triggers before the nozzle touches the print surface. The most ideal setup is to have it trigger once the nozzle is only 0.2mm from the bed but as long as the probe triggers with the nozzle above the print surface and the probe is higher up than the nozzle, you should be good to go. The Z-offset can then be adjusted in the slicer software if your nozzle is higher than the ideal 0.2 millimeters. Next on your computer open up the Repetier host software head into config printer settings. Under the connection tab match the settings shown on the screen. If you have any trouble connecting later on adjusting the port connection will help. Again under the printer tab match the settings shown on screen. Under the extruder tab set your max extruder and bed temps to 250 and 120 respectively. Set the nozzle diameter to 0.4 mil. In printer shape, match the values for all the boxes as shown on screen. Finally, leave the script and advanced as default and save the preset as ProForge single, hit apply and then OK. Next, connect to the printer using the ProForge single settings. Once connected, head into the manual control window and type M119 into the G code command terminal and then hit send. If the end stops and Z-probe have been connected correctly, you should receive back open for all three in the event log. Next, manually trigger each one and resend the M119 command to make sure that they are all functioning correctly. Next, use the manual control interface to move the printhead by a small increment in all of the axes. Bear in mind that moving the Z-axis in the positive direction will move the print platform down. Next, we'll be using a multimeter to adjust the trim pots and the stepper drivers to ensure that all of the motors are getting the correct amount of uh, current going to them. Uh, if you don't have a multimeter you can skip this step but um, if you find later on uh, that your motors are skipping or not turning uh, because there is a lack of current going to them uh, you'll have to just um, in a sense eyeball it by turning the trim pots on the stepper drivers uh, clockwise to increase the amount of current going to the motors but if you do have access to a multimeter then we can set um, the recommended values that I'm using for my machine uh, here in this step so for example we'll measure the extruder uh, stepper driver um, voltage reference and I recommend setting this to 1.1 volt. Um, we'll measure it by taking the positive terminal and placing it on top of the uh, trim pot and taking the negative probe and placing it onto the negative terminal on the ramp's power connector. Uh, as you can hopefully see, the voltage there is 1.1 volts, which is correct. If the voltage is any lower than 1.1, uh, uh, you want to take the plastic screwdriver here and turn the trim pot clockwise and measure again until you get to 1.1 volts. For the x-axis, we want to set this um, stepper driver to 0.8 volts. For the y-axis, we want to set it to 1 volt and for the z-axis we want to set it to 1.2 volts. Next we'll go ahead and ohm all of the axes with a G28 command.
Next, home only the Y axis and adjust the Y end stop so that when the Y axis is homed, the nozzle lands directly over the back edge of the print surface. Then move the print head to the center of the bed and home just the X axis. Use Repetier Host to move the print head until the nozzle is hovering directly over the left edge of the print surface and make a note of this X position. Next, disconnect from Repetier Host and head back into the firmware. In the configuration.h tab, scroll down to line 778 and replace the zero next to the X min position to a negative of what your recorded X position was when the nozzle was over the left edge of the print surface. In my case, I'll be replacing the zero with a negative 28. And finally, upload the firmware to the Proforge. Next, reconnect the Proforge to the Repetier Host software and check the axis lengths by homing and then moving them a set distance and measuring that they have actually moved by that amount. It doesn't have to be super accurate at this stage as doing a test print later on will give a better indication of the actual distance moved. Switch on the print fan, heated bed and extruder to make sure that they are all working correctly. Once the extruder has reached a minimum of 180 degrees Celsius, extrude out some PLA filament. Make sure that the flow is smooth and consistent as shown on screen. Once you're happy that the axes are moving by the correct amount, send a G28 command followed by a G29 command to run through the auto leveling procedure. Next go to the slicer section of Repetier Host and set the slicer to select 3R. Then head into configuration, go to file, load config bundle and navigate to the slicer config profile you downloaded from the Proforge GitHub. Make sure also to have the Proforge default selected in all the drop downs on the slicer tab. Next go into the object placement window and import an STL model to print. Three beginner models can be found on the GitHub page. In this example I'll be printing the 3D Benchy. Once you're happy with the object's placement and orientation, go ahead and hit the Slice with Slick 3R button to convert the model to G-code. Once it's finished slicing, head to the Print Preview window and click on Save to file. Insert your SD card and save the G-code file to it. Then we'll take the SD card, insert it into the SD card slot, and navigate down to Print from SD. And Click on 3D Benchy to start the print. 